In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Carolyn and I have three children. <clears throat> the oldest, a boy, and then two girls. And they're all, you know, about two years uh, between, uh, between each one of them. And at one point, a number of years ago, when I was pastor at our church in Statesville, at that time, our son, as I, the best I recall, was probably about in junior high, maybe seventh grade, something like that. The girls were still in elementary school, you know, grades six and four or five and three or something like that. Again, not, not sure exactly which, I can't remember. But during that time, when the kids were that age, uh, Carolyn had you know, some it was non -life, non life threatening surgery, but it did require her uh, to be off her feet for a while. And so, what we decided that would be a good time to do something a bit, a bit out of the ordinary. So, um, I took the kids <clears throat> and we went on a camping trip to Michigan. And she went because she had to be off her feet, she went to uh, stay with her mother in Conover. So, again, that just kind of worked out for all of us quite well. So I say, we went to this, on this camping trip with the kids, I did, and on the way back from Michigan, we stopped at, uh, for a day at Cedar Point, and that's an amusement park on Lake Erie in Sandusky, Ohio. And I checked out there and I discovered now, I didn't know it then, but it's the second oldest amusement park in the United States. It was opened in 1870. That's an old amusement park. Uh, it has 364 acres, <clears throat> has 72 rides, and 17 of those rides are roller coasters. So we went uh, and went into the park, and as we got in there and started walking around, the first roller coaster that we encountered, the four of us just stood there in awe, looking at it because the closest that any of us, myself included, had come to riding a roller coaster was Mouse Line Number 9 at Tweetsie Railroad. <laughs> Never been on a roller coaster before any of us. And as we stood there transfixed by the terror of it all, this roller coaster, all of a sudden I see the girls get in line to ride the thing. Now, my son and I, and I, again, I don't know if these words were actually spoken, but they're certainly the essence of it. My son and I, you know, without maybe even wordlessly, kind of communicated with one another, you want to ride? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> me either. No way we were going to get on that thing. The only thing I was thinking at the time is how I was going to explain to Carolyn that I let, her da let our daughters get on a roller coaster where they, where they could have died. So there, my son and I stood, waving goodbye <laughs> to my precious little girls, getting on a roller coaster. Goodbye. After they were seated in the roller coaster car, and it began its clack, clack, clacking ascent to the pinnacle of the track where they would hurtle down to begin their torturous, stomach-turning, death-defying experience. Again, my son and I looked at one another and somehow, either verbally or non-verbally, communicated, what are we, wimps? <laughs> or are we men? Are we going to let those little girls show us up? No way. So my son and I put on our falsely brave faces, got in line, and rode the beast. <laughs> and rode three or four roller coasters after that. Now there really is a faith point to all of this. <clears throat> and it's embedded in the opening verse of today's gospel reading. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem. Now they weren't going to Jerusalem for a leisurely 
camping trip. A couple of verses later, Mark records for us the words of Jesus as he spoke to his disciples. They were going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be delivered over the, to the chief priests and the scribes. And they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. <clears throat> and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. That's what was going to happen in Jerusalem. They were on the road going up to this Jerusalem and Jesus was walking ahead of them and they were amazed and those who followed were afraid. I can tell you my son and I were truly afraid to get on that roller coaster. But my two young daughters walked ahead of us. And thus my son and I were emboldened to follow. To be a true disciple, follower of Jesus, to live our baptism and bear the family name given to us in that new birth, the family name Christian, is not a ride on a merry-go-round. Living out our baptism, being a follower, a disciple of Jesus, bearing the name of Christ in this life, is more akin to getting on board the most terrifying roller coaster able to be built. Living out our baptism, bearing the name of Christ, being a follower, a disciple of Jesus, is following. And not holding back, but following. Following him and standing by him who was mocked and spat upon and flogged and killed and in the following likely getting caught in the crossfire. And that's one thing that Jesus' disciples understood. We read the Gospels again, especially in Mark, <clears throat> and it shows how often they were just befuddled. Didn't know what Jesus was talking about, or almost it seems like in today's Gospel about James and John especially, didn't care about it. They were more concerned about you know, being seated with Jesus in his glory. Sort of passed over this whole business about him being you know, uh, turned over to the Gentiles and flogged and killed and all of that. They were concerned about themselves. But the disciples realized that they could get caught in the crossfire. And that's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was arrested, they all fled. And that's why for at least a week or better, they hid behind locked doors. They knew the cost of following Jesus. They knew they could get caught in the crossfire. And they wanted nothing to do with it. From today's epistle reading. <clears throat> In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son... He learned obedience through what he suffered. He learned obedience through what he suffered. And that obedience, and again, it was obedience, remember. What did Jesus pray to the Father? Remove this cup, cup of symbolizing suffering that he was about to experience. Remove this cup from me. But not my will, but yours be done. And it was the Father's will that he drink the cup. And he did. 
And in drinking the cup, that's when he experienced the mockery, the utter contempt, being spit in one's face. I, I, I don't know that I've ever had my face spit upon, but I can't imagine that it hurts. But it is certainly some of the most utter contempt that you can show to a person, spit in their face. And that contempt was shown to him. His obedience resulted in him receiving the lashes of the stone-studded whip that tore his flesh. And then finally, his torturous execution by means of crucifixion. Jesus learned his obedience through suffering. And it was the suffering that he had to endure to ransom the whole world for those who would believe. He was obedient for the sake of the world. He was obedient for the sake even of those who were mocking him and spitting on him, who were whipping him and who nailed him to the cross. His obedience was for those very ones. And that kind of experience, that kind of suffering and mockery and contempt and even death was and is the experience of faithfully obedient followers of Jesus, the ones we call martyrs. Martyrs both ancient and contemporary. But these things still happen in certain parts of the world for those who obediently follow Jesus. Now, we are blessedly free of those most extreme forms of hostility for obediently following Jesus. But as we engage and, and witness to the world, the unbelieving world, and we're, we're pretty, you know, quite safe and comfortable around other Christians. But when we engage and witness to the world, the unbelieving world, then mockery and contempt are very possible responses that we might perceive. Might perceive them from associates, neighbors, friends even, possibly even family members if we are obediently following Jesus. And when I think about this, this always comes to my mind, these people in particular, college students who are Christians, especially come to my mind, and how they must be so challenged on many of our nation's colleges and universities. There are some certainly Christian martyrs, these Christian college students. In the world, in the unbelieving world, for example, one's obedience to the Christian virtues of truth and honesty could negatively impact one's career or job. Following, being obedient to Jesus commands to love one's enemies. Love your enemy. Love him or her. Following or be obe being obedient to Jesus' command to forgive the one who has sinned against you from your heart. Not superficially, but from the heart. Someone who sinned against you, I mean, really sinned against you, done something horrible. Jesus says, forgive that person from your heart. I mean, really, sincerely forgive them. Following or be obe being obedient to Jesus uh, commands not to bear grudges or to speak evil of another person. All of these things while not 
I don't suppose physically painful, can be torturous. If we truly want to follow Jesus, if we truly want, like Jesus, to suffer in our obedience, that can be really torturous. Love my enemy? How hard is that? Forgive the one who really has wronged me. I mean, not just a little thing, but really is some kind of sin, some kind of something that he or she did to me. And to forgive that person from my heart, that can be torture. To let, hold of, let go of grudges, to refuse to speak evil of another person, especially when they're not in your presence, man, that can be hard. It can be torturous. Watching my daughters get on that roller coaster enabled my son and me to set our fear aside and follow them. And so on a certainly more meaningful and critical level, as difficult, as challenging, as inconvenient, as unappealing, even as painful and frightening as following Jesus can be. There is no better encouragement and advice than what we have heard at the beginning of the service for this Lenten season. Words from the Spirit's author of the letter to the Hebrews. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, but also fix your eyes on Jesus, who has walked ahead of you into Jerusalem. Into Jerusalem where all of this Mockery and suffering and pain and even death took place. Fix your eyes on Jesus when you struggle to be a true follower, a true disciple of Jesus, truly obedient. Fix your eyes on Jesus who has walked ahead of you into Jerusalem Fix your eyes on him and follow into your Jerusalem, whatever that might happen to be. Fix your eyes on Jesus as you go into Jerusalem, that terrifying roller coaster of faithful obedience. Fixing your eyes on Jesus, who has walked ahead of you into Jerusalem, then can embolden you to follow, to be obedient, to resist temptation. Fix your eyes on Jesus, for he's walked ahead of you. And as it was for Jesus, so it will be for you. Your obediences, your following, will not be your last ride. The Son of Man will be delivered over into the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. That's Jerusalem. But Jesus concludes that description saying, and after three days he will rise. Your obediences you're following. That's not going to be your last ride. As Jesus rose from the dead, 
So will you. Maybe a difficult time getting there, as it was for Jesus. But get there you will, because of Jesus' obedience. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace and the power of God, <clears throat> which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen. We join now in confessing our Christian faith. We do it this day in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. And together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated as we come before our God in prayer to pray for those who we know are in need and others as well. <clears throat> holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you have revealed Jesus Christ alone to be the way, the truth, and the life. Protect your church from the temptation to compromise this message of salvation, as well as from the temptation to remain silent when your truth is challenged. All this that your pure word, eagerly proclaimed and guided by the Holy Spirit, may lead many from all nations and nationalities to worship and praise you in this life and in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, lead all who bear the name of Christ to regularly study and meditate on your holy word for the strengthening of their faith, that they may rejoice in the gift of the washing of rebirth and renewal in the Holy Spirit that they received in their baptism and earnestly live lives of repentance and willing obedience before you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you have ordained the role of civil government for the safety and temporal blessing of all people. To that end, mercifully remember Donald, our president, the Congress and Judiciary of the United States, Roy, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant also your holy angels to protect all who serve in our military, law enforcement, and others whose calling to serve and protect our nation and communities put them in harm's way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon all who call upon you in their time of need. And especially we remember before you this day your servants whom we know to have special needs at this time. For Don and Fred, as they deal with their cancer and the treatments that they are receiving. For Jetty's son and Sonia's brother, Frank. For the Brazos' family member, Thomas. For Kitty and Donna's friend, Francis. For Janice Martin's family member, Reverend Eric Estes. All of these struggling in one way or another in certain uh, various uh, kinds of treatments for for their cancer. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with them and use your healing upon them so that they might be able to continue uh, to serve you as your people. We continue to commend them to your care. We give thanks also that you have been with Marilyn Herman and that she is recovering from her injuries that she sustained, that you continue to bless Jetty's one-year-old great-great-nephew, Grayson, and uh, the, this, his struggle with cancer and his uh, treatments and rehabilitation that's going on now. We commend to your care Ken Brockman in a nursing home and BJ's mother Jean in hospice care. We commend all of these people to you, O oh Lord, knowing that they are in your care 
and that you know what is best for them. And we ask you to receive them, uh, for them to receive you in their lives and in their faith. Teach us all to pray for and be content with daily bread, knowing that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, help all who seek you to humbly embrace Jesus' teaching that no one may approach or come to you except through him. Where there are errors among those who profess to be Christians, lead them to your truth. Deliver all who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, Grant us peace with you because of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Enable all in the body of Christ to speak and act peaceably with one another and to bear with one another in love and mercifully grant peace between nations, races, and classes of people everywhere through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, Grant that we, in our interactions with others, would not return evil for evil, but that we may turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, and do good to all. Bless our enemies, and graciously grant them such things as are both needful for them and profitable for their salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you care for your creation, your care for your creation endures forever. Bless all godly vocations for the good of all and the sustenance of the earth. Provide gainful employment to all who are able to work and that they may provide for themselves and their families. For those unable to work, lead individuals and agencies to provide for their needs. Grant your blessing on all who bring forth the bounty of your creation for the good of all. Help us to be good stewards of your wondrous creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, continue to send the blessing and the power of your Holy Spirit upon those who have specialized ministries and minister in difficult situations and places. We remember especially Pastor Zhang Yang and the Trinity Hmong Lutheran Mission, Krista Young and her family serving in Kenya, and Joanna Johnson teaching at Concordia Lutheran School in Taiwan. Continue to bless them with power as they witness and as they teach so that many there may come to faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we give you thanks for the ways in which you bless us in so many ways in this life. Uh, we uh, celebrate together with uh, Bill and BJ the birth of uh, an infant uh, granddaughter uh, to, uh, to their uh, children in, in, uh, in, in Florida. We ask that, you, that they might celebrate that, uh, that new life and that you might continue that new life so that it might be your child both now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All these things, and whatsoever else we or others need, in your great mercy, grant us, holy God, holy, mighty, and immortal, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.